A series of atmospheric rivers at the start of our rainy season brought incredible amounts of rain and record breaking snowpack to the Sierra Nevada in December. Here in San Diego, we are still above average on our rainfall total, but this mm, mm, this many atmospheric rivers usually, uh, what causes them, we want to know. Meteorologist Sean Stiles spoke with the National Weather Service to get some insight in this Earth 8 report. The West Coast has seen incredible amounts of rain and record snowfall in the Sierra Nevada over the past month, all thanks to the atmospheric river, much like the San Diego River, but transporting hundreds of times more moisture. So are we seeing more of them and what the heck causes them? For this year, you know, this is our third one. The one in late October was weak for Southern California, but it was strong for Northern California. Then we had December 14th. And that was uh, moderate to strong for Southern California. Then there was the Christmas storm cycle that brought the record breaking snowfall to Lake Tahoe. Alex Tardy is a meteorologist with the National Weather Service. So are we seeing more? I would say the short answer is no, we're not seeing more atmospheric rivers in California. We only typically average three or four a year um, that are notable and maybe five or six that end up being, you know, weak type of atmospheric rivers. The moisture in atmospheric rivers originates in the intertropical convergence zone and plays a key role in our rainfall. The research has shown that 50 to 70% of our rainfall comes in some form or shape from a series or a handful of these atmospheric rivers. To create an atmospheric river, you need three things. Let's first start with the moisture source. These are the Hawaiian Islands here, and the intertropical convergence zone is basically 10 degrees north and south of the equator. This air is heavily saturated with moisture because the sea surface temperatures are so warm and the evaporation that creates. Then you have an area of low pressure digging down out of the Gulf of Alaska. This moves very slowly, and the circulation around that starts to pull that plume of moisture up into the area of low pressure. Now combine the northern branch of the jet stream and the southern branch of the jet stream coming together. We call that phasing. And now you've got the conveyor belt that's pumping in that moisture towards the west coast. And with the atmospheric in place, you get a whole lot of rain at lower elevations and a ton of snow up high. If you have an atmospheric river with everything else, the frontal band, the wind, then you're talking about even more efficient rain. So you're able to produce so much more rain than you might normally be able to. So it's kind of icing on the cake. There was a huge episode in 2010 when it rained for three days starting on December 20th. Qualcomm Stadium was flooded and the San Diego River was over 14 feet. Now you have the atmospheric rivers like 2010, which come in waves, two or three waves. They come in slower. Those are the big ones. Those are pretty rare. With three atmospheric rivers already in the rain barrel, I had to ask. In your crystal ball, do you see this winter being a drought breaker? I would hesitate to call it a drought buster. Most of our rain comes in January and February in California. I would like to see at least average conditions in January, February before we can say drought buster. Well, we're ahead of the game right now when it comes to rainfall, but as we've heard, we still got three more months to go. So keep conserving the water around the house and hopefully we can hold this drought back. Back to you in the studio. Just need it to be average from here on out. Right? Yes. Let's we're in a good space here. In average is great. Yes. <laughs>